Thanks for joining me in today's lesson. In this first tutorial, we will graph quadratic functions from intercept form. So we're in the second part of section 4.2, and now we're looking at intercept form. We have looked at vertex form, standard form, and now we're in intercept form. But before we get started and before I give you what intercept form is, let's do some thinking. What if we had a quadratic function, a parabola, that has x-intercepts of 2, 0, and 4, 0. Where is the axis of symmetry? Let's plot those two points, an x-intercept of 2, 0, and an x-intercept of 4, 0. If these are two points on our parabola, do you know where the axis of symmetry would have to be? I hope that you're thinking that the axis of symmetry would have to be exactly in the middle of these two x-intercepts, and you would be correct. The axis of symmetry will be exactly in the middle of any two points that are symmetrical on our parabola. So our axis of symmetry in this case would have to be 1, 2, 3, x equals 3 x equals 3 would be the equation of our axis of symmetry. And where is this value of 3 coming from? Well, we're taking the 2 and the 4, and we're finding the number that's exactly in the middle. Great. Some good thinking there. Let's think some more. If a equals 1, then what would the vertex of this parabola have to be? If a is 1. Well, if a is 1, that means that a is positive and that would be opening upward. Do you know where your vertex would have to be? Obviously, the vertex has to be somewhere along this axis of symmetry because the axis of symmetry uh, intersects right through the vertex. If a is 1, I think that it makes sense that it would have to be right here. That would have to be where our vertex is because if a is 1, then from our vertex we go right 1, up 1 left one, up one. So right there at 3, negative 1, that's where our vertex would be. One last question. What if I said that a is equal to negative 1? What is the vertex of this parabola? Well, again, the vertex has to be somewhere along this axis of symmetry. If a is negative 1, then we open upside down. And therefore, we're opening this way, and our vertex would have to be right here. I'll put a little box, because then we'd be going right one down one, left one down one. So that's the ordered pair 3, 1. The point of this, these three warm-up questions is, for intercept form, I'm going to be giving you the two x-intercepts of your parabola. You need to cut the, that distance in half to find your axis of symmetry, which gives us the x-coordinate of our vertex, and then we will plug in and find the y-coordinate of our vertex. So hopefully that's some good thinking there. Here is our intercept form for a quadratic function. And like we've done with the other two, let's put this one in a nice little bubble or a little cloud. It is y equals a times a quantity x minus p times another quantity x minus q. Obviously very different looking from vertex form and very different looking from standard form. And that's another one of the things you need to be able to do. You need to be able to identify which form is which. So let's talk about a. a, again, is that value that we know and love from vertex form, from standard form, that tells us all about our outputs. This first quantity will give us one of our x-intercepts, one of our zeros, one of our roots, one of our solutions. p is one of our roots, one of our x-intercepts. This other uh, a binomial gives us another root, another zero, another x-intercept, another solution. Q. P and Q are the x-intercepts. Intercept form is basically factored form. 
when you have factored your quadratic, you can see the two places where you will cross the x-axis, and they come from your parentheses. So let's look at the steps we now have for intercept form. When it's an intercept form, the first thing you probably want to do is find the two x-intercepts. The two x-intercepts in this case would be p0 and q0, if you wrote them as ordered pairs. So those are your zeros. So that's one of the nice things about intercept form. It instantly tells you the zeros, or the solutions, or the roots. Find the axis of symmetry. Remember, axis of symmetry will always be x equals. It's always going to be the equation. What we need to do is find the number that's exactly in the middle of our two x-intercepts. And to do that, we just take our two values, p and q, we add them together, and we divide by 2. We're really just taking the average of those two values. To find a number that's exactly in the middle of two numbers, you add them up and divide by 2. So this will be our axis of symmetry. When we're looking for our vertex, the vertex will have an x-coordinate of that value, whatever p plus q divided by 2 is. And once we have the x value of our vertex, we will plug that value in, and we will have our y value. Very similar to the standard form. Once we had the x-coordinate of our vertex, we used that number, we plugged it into the function, and we found our y-coordinate. It's all about finding the vertex, and this is a third way to find the vertex with intercept form. And once we've done that, it's pretty simple. Plot the vertex, and we'll graph our parent pattern just like we've done before. So let's explore this first example. Example 1. We have a of x is x minus 3 times x minus 7. Because I see two sets of parentheses, I know that this is going to be intercept form. And maybe you mark that and get into the habit of identifying. This is intercept form. So I should probably find my two x-intercepts. So x-intercepts. The first one comes from the first parenthesis, and it's the value of 3. It's still that same idea of being opposite. It's 3 minus 3 that makes 0, so 3. And the other one is 7. And maybe we plot those, 3 and 7. So 1, 2, 3. Here's an x-intercept, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's the other x-intercept. Now we know that our axis of symmetry is going to be exactly in the middle. And for the people that just are visual, you can see that it's going to be right here in this line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But for the people that might need to prove it with the math, they can do 3 plus 7. Those are the two x-intercepts. Add them up and divide by 2. Of course, that's equal to 10 divided by 2, which of course is equal to 5. So x equals 5 is our axis of symmetry. Go ahead and put that over here since we're going to be writing it down. Which means that our vertex has an x-coordinate of 5. Remember, the x-coordinate is always the same right here for the axis of symmetry and right here for the vertex. So we know that the vertex is going to be somewhere along this line, so it must have an x-value of 5. Now, how are we going to find the y-value? Now we have to plug the 5 in. Here's our function, a of x, x minus 3 times x minus 7. So to find the y value, I'm going to take, I'll, I'll find a of 5, basically. I don't want a of x anymore, I want a of 5. Replace the x with a 5, so 5 minus 3 and 5 minus 7. That's what a of 5 is going to be, and that's what our y value will be. So this becomes 2 times negative 2 which is negative 4. So there's our y value. Remember, a of x or a of 5 is just a fancy name for y, so the y coordinate is negative 4. And now I have my vertex. Let's go plot that. 5, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll put a little star since that's our starting point. And now I can see that the value of a is a positive. I knew that. In fact, I already know what the value of a is. It's a 1. There it is, which means that when I input a 1, I output a 1. When I input a 2, I output a 4, and it's already there as the x-intercept. So that's a nice way of double-checking. 
Let's do my symmetrical point here. And since we're going to be graphing it, why don't we do one more point over here? One, two, three to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want as many points as you can on our graph paper. And here is our parabola. We'll come back and finish all of the rest of the things that I'm looking for as a try problem. But right now, your goal is to take your intercept form to be able to find the x coordinate of your vertex and then plug that in to be able to find your y coordinate of your vertex. We took this 5 and we plugged it right in there, right in there. Example 2, b of x. Same thing, let's go find our x-intercepts first. I know this is intercept form. Because I see two sets of parentheses. Oh, and I see a different value of a. It's a negative 2. This must be opening upside down. We'll worry about that when we need to. x plus 2 is the first factor, is the first intercept. So negative 2 must be that x-intercept. And the next one is x plus 4, so that's negative 4. So here's negative 2, and here's negative 4. I instantly can see that my axis of symmetry is right here in the middle at 1, 2, negative 3. x equals negative 3 is my axis of symmetry. If you want to prove that mathematically, take your negative 2, take your negative 4, add them together, and divide by 2. This becomes negative 6 divided by 2, which of course becomes negative 3. So x equals negative 3 is our axis of symmetry, and negative 3 is the x-coordinate of my vertex. Now I need to find the y-coordinate of my vertex, so I will take b of x and I will dump in a negative 3. So the negative 3 goes in place of the x. So, oops, I forgot the negative 2, hold on. Negative 2, don't forget that part of your equation. Negative 2, and then your parenthesis, x plus 2 becomes negative 3 plus 2, and x plus 4 becomes negative 3 plus 4. So now let's crunch all these numbers down. Let's see what we get. We've got the negative 2. This becomes negative 1. This becomes positive 1. Negative times negative times positive is all positive. 2 times 1 times 1 becomes 2. So our y value is 2. So negative 3, 2 is our vertex. And let's confirm that. 1, 2, negative 3, 2 would be up here, which looks like we would be opening downward. And we knew that because a is negative. And we've got that it's negative 2, which means when we input a 1, we don't go down 1 like normal. We go down 2 which makes sense because we already have this dot here. When we go back to the star and input a 2, we normally would be going down 4 because of the negative, but this time we're going down 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And left 2, down 8 as well because it's a nice mirror image. And there's our parabola. So now we've done two examples for how to find the vertex from intercept form, and we've done our two graphs. What I'd like you to do is go back and fill in all of these characteristics. This is all review, but if you would please pause the video and write all the other things down for these graphs, and then unpause and check your answers with me. So pause now. Thank you. Okay, thanks for doing that. This is back to example one. Our domain, of course, is all reals. Our range with the bracket starts at negative 4 and goes up to infinity. Our roots were actually the first things that we found, 3 and 7. This time I decided to write them as ordered pairs. Our y-intercept, you can't see the y-intercept here, but you know it's eventually going to cross the y-axis. If you need to do work to find the y-intercept, it's really simple. All you have to do is take your function and plug a 0 in for x. Plug a 0 here, plug a 0 here, because every y-intercept, x is 0. So 0 minus 3 times 0 minus 7 were turned into negative 3 times negative 7, which is 21. So 0, 21 is my y-intercept. 
My increasing interval depends on where the x value of our vertex is, which is 5. So that's why I'm using a 5 here and here. And then I use my nice plus or minus symbol for my end behavior. I also remembered to uh, call my function with its fancy name a of x. Both ends are pointing upward. Example 2. I did it in blue. Here's our domain, here's our range. This time we go up to a, a highest point with the bracket on the two. My roots, my y-intercept, again, I took my function and I plugged the zero in for the x's. So I have negative two times zero plus two times zero plus four, and I crunched all those numbers down to negative 16. And I verified that that would make sense, and it looks like it is gonna cross at negative 16 down here. Here are my increasing, decreasing intervals, and I just realized that I forgot a parenthesis right here on the infinity, so there we go. And my end behavior, again, I used plus or minus, and I remembered that it was b of x. I use the plus or minus because both ends do the same thing. In this case, they both point down. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and we've got one more little tutorial after this. I'll see you in class for practice. See ya.